Hello, and welcome back to My Book of Mormon with me, David Michael, and of course... Me, Bryce Blankenegel. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going okay. We are uh, up to section 19 on the DNC, and I know Bryce has been on the edge of his seat waiting for uh, section 20, but I'm afraid you're going to just have to uh, wait, wait a little bit longer, Bryce, because uh, 19 does not look short, so uh, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see how much we can get through. How long is it going to take us to go through this book if we make one episode per section like this? I believe that you have promised me several sections that are less than a page, so those have to come eventually. <laughs> eventually? <laughs> have yet to see any of those yet, but they will happen. Well, before you were the one that was always stalling me so the show would last forever. Now it sounds like you're already getting sick of this. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm sick of it on your, on your behalf. That's what it is. There you go. Well, you know, Bryce, you're, yeah. you are a researcher now, so this is all part of your uh, overall research project, right? Well, and that's what's why I am actually enjoying doing it so much, is just because I'm learning so much having not read the Doctrine and Covenants before, and I, I'm really enjoying just putting, like, the comparisons that we're doing, you know, from the old one to the new one. That's, I, I mean, as much of a drag as sometimes reading it is because of the sheer repetition of it, I mean, it is quite a lot of fun just to uh, to see what's in here and just see all of the craziness that was bouncing around inside of Joseph's and Sidney Rigdon's skulls. And all this time, I thought it was just because you liked talking to me. But all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, I can't wait for that silky smooth voice to just drizzle into my ear holes. Is that it? You just dream about yeah. it every night till the next time we record? Every night, yep. It gets well, me through the day. Yeah, yeah. If you ever need it, you can always just queue up an old episode. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, before this gets any more awkward, uh, right. section 19. Oh, and of course, I know I said I was going to like do all the thanks this time. I did have some uh, family issues come up, so I, I was out of town most of uh, the time between last time we recorded and now, so yeah, I am a bit behind. So we're just going, we're just going lazy. We're just going to go old read, and uh, I'll catch up, though. And thanks to everybody, just seriously, to everybody that writes in that I don't have a chance to reply to. And uh, for the people that have jumped on to Patreon and the people that have sent PayPal donations, it's all appreciated. You're all awesome. And I will give you the thanks that you have earned, uh, just not this episode. So there is that. All right. So now, nice section 19. <clears throat> Here we go. Revelation given through Joseph Smith. You know, it's always so weird. These sections start. It's either like Revelation given to, given through. Sometimes it's given to more than one person. It's, uh, I'm telling you, every time, but but all, in the end of the day, it was just Joseph talking, right? So, this time it sounds like it's the most accurate description of what was actually happening, that a revelation <laughs> was given through Joseph Smith. So, in other words, they finally I, took him 19 sections to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, his I, voice I, is I talking. I cannot wait to read mine. <laughs> Finish yours so I can read mine. Okay, just to shout okay, at okay, entire sorry. Uh, at <laughs> Manchester, New York, likely, I love that, likely in the summer of 1829, but come on. Who really knows? All right. <laughs> it, just, it says likely. How, how do you know? <laughs> in his history, the prophet introduces it as, quote, a commandment of God and not of man. <laughs> because let's not forget, we learned last episode, God and Jesus are definitely not men. All right. No, of course not. No, no, no. Uh, to Martin Harris, given by him who is eternal, end quote. All right. So through Joseph Smith to Martin Harris, uh, but not by a man. Mm -mm. This is God we're talking about, not a man. Okay, so mine was vastly different to the point that if we hadn't have done like a section check before hitting the record button, I would think that we're reading different sections here. We have learned from the past. We at least, so yes. I, I know we don't read ahead, guys, but we have decided before we start, we read the first verse of whatever's coming just to make sure that we are on the same <laughs> section. <laughs> we don't want to keep running into that. But no, okay, so this is the heading on mine. Mine says a commandment. So it says nothing about a revelation, a commandment of God and not of man to you, Martin. Wow. And, it, I mean, it's like not, you know, it doesn't say for, through the revelator or through the prophet to Martin Harris. It's like a commandment of God and not of man to you. I mean, that's the most unique chapter heading I've ever seen. And then it goes on to say, given in Manchester, New York, March 1830. What? But mine <laughs> says it was likely in the summer of 1829. I know, I know. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I, I would think that these are different sections if we hadn't have done the check. But then mine does end the same way because mine says, by him who is eternal. All right, they had to, they had to wrap it up the same, right? 
<laughs> so that is but quite yeah. a bit off. That's like an entire year difference. That's a year. That is more than a year. And yours That's was crazy. yours was written closer to the supposed event. So you would think that yours would be the more, I don't know, accurate dating. But for some well, reason. Yeah. And this was supposedly given like March 1830, right before the church was like organized in April. This was like supposedly so mine is given after the Book of Mormon had been published and was being distributed. Yours was supposedly given before the Book of Mormon was printed. That does seem to be pretty significant. That Yeah, that does seem. I mean, and just, just for the sheer timeline sake, I wonder what else is different if they were able to change, uh, you know, a whole year worth of revelation here. Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? And uh, also, wait. we have ourselves a little scavenger hunt. Let's see if we can figure out why on earth. They uh, felt the need to change the date. That'll be, uh, let's see if we can crack that code, Bryce. I like that. Let's do All it. All right. So let's begin. Verse 1. I am Alpha and Omega, Christ the Lord. Yay. Drink. Even I am he. <laughs> Even I am he. Oh, okay. But I thought he wasn't a man. Anyway. Uh, the beginning and the end, the Redeemer of the world. Me just start. You know what? I think Jesus might be like a, he, he wants to be a rapper, right? Because like, <laughs> that's what rap music is, right? It's just like guys bragging, right? I have the most stuff. I'm the coolest. I'll kill you if you mess with me. Yeah. 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 Jesus the rapper. <laughs> that's, yep, the, the, the caller ID. Talking about his, his pimping and his hoeing. Actually, verse two, he just keeps right on rapping. I, having Dude, accomplished. No, okay, I, I'm, I got to read my verse one because it's, it's vastly different. It's oh in like God. a completely different order. Okay. So mine starts out, yay, drink, even I... I am he, the beginning and the end, yea, drink, Alpha and Omega, Christ the Lord, the Redeemer of the world. So weird. It said the same thing, just in a different order. I guess I just didn't exactly. like the way it was ordered before. And, and mine added another yea, I think. It did. So I think we should, when, when in doubt, uh, we will default <laughs> on the one that has more drinks. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. I mean, we're we're not we're gonna gonna pansy out of it here, are we? So so Come Jesus still has the mic in this rap battle for verse two. I having accomplished and finished the will of Him whose I am, even the Father concerning me, having done this that I might subdue all things unto myself. Now, first of all, I don't even what in the hell did any of that mean? So finished... well, that, that was like the biggest color idea we've had this whole time. Yeah, but he is still kind of bragging. He's like, look what I did. Look what I accomplished and finished. Come on. <laughs> I'm no. so awesome. So I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it that he finished the will of his dad. It's fine. But this thing that I might subdue all things unto myself, that's a bit creepy. Like, subdue, you kind of think like a, you know, like a, a wild animal and you subdue it. You kind of tame it. I guess that's what he's kind of saying. He's going to just kind of make us all really super boring. Well, and I, I think that's kind of a recurring theme in Mormonism, too, is like it's all about submitting to the will of Father or something, right? It's Well, and it's Christianity in general, right? It's subduing, it's submitting, it's, uh, you know, even Islam is the, you know, the, the definition of Islam is submission. So, I mean, it, it kind of seems to be fairly pervasive throughout most religions, just subdue. So I, I don't see it as being that all that unique, but, you know, from like a skeptical perspective, yeah, that is kind of weird. I mean, it's he's like, just so so yeah, blatant submission. All right, yeah. it seems like he's still bragging, but you take over at verse 3, unless there was something significant about 2 that was different. No, 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 where it's good. Um, retaining all power, even to the destroying of Catan? What? Oh, Satan. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's, that's the bad printing on my end. I was going to say mine's work. a Satan. <laughs> right? Catan. We got a new character. Woo! <laughs> uh, is uh, is this Final works. Fantasy? What's going on? <laughs> it's starting to get that way. Uh, brass balls and whatnot. Um, yeah, Satan and his works at the end of the world, and the last great day of judgment, which I shall pass upon the inhabitants thereof, judging every man according to his works and the deeds which he hath done. Well, same old, same old. But again, yep, he's still old. rapping, right? So he started out <laughs> saying, like, look, at, look how awesome I am, look what I've done, and now he's just like, you know, I put a cap in my enemy's ass. Like, he's just, you know... <laughs> This is just a rap song. <laughs> it's a rap song in Old English. It's all we're reading. <laughs> in Old English, yep. It's Elizabethan rap, yo. All right, uh, so next. And surely every man must repent or suffer. <laughs> wow. For I, God, am endless. Well, okay. So again, wow. we have the uh, still going Trinitarian, because he started out saying he was Christ, and now he's saying he's God. So they haven't figured that out yet. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, yo. They they haven't figured it out the, the Mormon way, anyway. 
Uh, they figured yeah. it out uh, in their own way, in like the the Rigdon Campbellite way that they figured it out, but not not in the way the Mormonism would have it figured out soon. Can you so. let's pause for a second? You've said the the Rigdonite or Sam, what is it? You just Campbellite. Well, yeah, how Campbellite. is that different than just modern or not modern, just Protestant? You know, view of Trinitarian or Trinitan Trinitarian. What's the word? Trinity. Sorry. Trinitarianism. Oof, took a while to get out. Uh, so there's a few things about Campbellite um, beliefs that are unique. Um, one is like being baptized and having like prophetic experiences after being baptized. Speaking in tongues is a big part of it. The uh, salvation by works is a big part of it. Ca uh, communism is a huge, huge part. I mean, the the farm of Isaac Morley was where. Uh, you know, Sidney Rigdon had basically set up a, a, a communal living place where people worked the land and all of these people gave all of their supplies to the, the Newell K. Whitney store and they would distribute it as kind of like a commonwealth yeah. type of communistic do, thing. I, yeah, yeah, I remember and all then, that from your show. Yeah, and then that's when Joseph swooped in and he was like, you guys are calling it the wrong thing. It's supposed to be called the Bishop's Storehouse and then they, they started their own version of the communism. Which, in other words, means... Mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. In Joseph's right? terms, mine, yes. Right. I'm going to call it the Bishop's exactly. Storehouse. As long as you all understand, this means I'm taking it. Anyway. All right. But but in terms of the uh, idea of the Trinity, that, that it seems like that wasn't far from what, I don't know, Catholicism or Protestantism kind of preached about yeah. it. Okay. Fair enough. Very much so. Yeah, and, okay. and that's why, like, at the beginning of the Book of Mormon, you see the differences from the old version to the new version. It's like, where I, um, Jesus Christ, who is the, who is God, and they changed it to Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, because the Son of God fits more into Mormonism, whereas Jesus Christ being God is more like the Trinitarian Campbellite version. Indeed. All right. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, okay, we just finished God saying, you better tell me you're sorry, I'm going to make you suffer. So, you're up. All right. Uh, wherefore, I revoke not the judgments which I shall pass, but woes shall go forth, weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Oh, delightful. Yeah, <laughs> so he goes straight lovely. from saying, I am endless, you must repent or suffer, then to descriptions of hell. All right. Like, let me explain to you what I mean by suffer. <laughs> <laughs> but this is interesting, though. He's saying, I'm not going to revoke judgments which I'm going to make. Okay, boy, that's hard to wrap your head around the timeline there, but that's kind of what it said. <laughs> no, all right, next up. <laughs> you can't triple stamp a double stamp. You can't triple stamp a double. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Uh, let's see. Yay, drink to those who are found on my left hand. Nevertheless, it is not written that there shall be no end to this torment, but it shall be written endless torment. <laughs> well, there you go. Actually, the only difference is mine said it uh, is written, Endless Torment. So there, none of this uh, future tense on that one. Like, it's already written. Oh, it's endless. Okay. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's emphatic about how badass God is in this case. Well, just how mean he is, too, right? I mean, like, if you didn't yeah. know anything and you just picked this, like, if you honestly knew nothing about the, the Christian version of God and you just picked this thing up, you'd be like, hmm, I don't know about this one. The guy kind of seems like a dick. <laughs> Why would, he want, why would he want to endlessly torment people? That just seems pretty cruel. All right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can find a, some more, a, you know, better moral conclusions in like the Nag Hammadi or any other book in, in a People magazine. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, more. But that's just personal observations. Again, it is written, eternal damnation. Wherefore, <laughs> it is more ex express than other scriptures. It is more express. Okay. But it might work upon the hearts of the children of men, all together for my name's glory. I'm, I wonder if that, the express part threw me off a little. I don't know. I think it just means like, look, there's nothing more clear than the fact that it is eternal and you're screwed. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's what it's saying. I can't express it anymore. Yeah. I can't be any more emphatic about how much hell is really, really going to suck if you uh, don't obey me. Which is interesting because uh, in the Bible, it actually isn't very expressly stated that, but fair enough. Yeah, that is true. That that's more um, like uh, Dante's Dante. Inferno esque, yeah. Um, yeah. or something like that. I mean, no, well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> read it and laugh at it. Uh, let's see. Wherefore I will explain unto you this mystery, for it is meet unto you to know, even as mine apostles. 
it is meat unto you? Yeah, I've uh, I've never really wondered. So mine is spelled M E T E. Is yours M E T E yeah. as well? Yeah. 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 So I've I've always wondered what that is exactly, and I think it's just like it's like good unto you. Yeah, it's or like, like advantageous what, what it's or supposed to right? be. Yeah, no. I, something like that. And I've heard it a few times just in scripture study in in you know church, but I've never really understood what exactly meat is. Yeah. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Yeah. We could look yeah. it up, but that seems like yeah, work. that's too much work. <laughs> I speak unto you that you are chosen in this thing, even as one, that you may enter into my rest. To my okay. Rest. So your choices yes, are sir. endless torment or rest. Well, at least I get to chill out for eternity. I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, back to it. For behold, drink. drink. The mystery of godliness. How great is it? <laughs> Wait, or behold, the mystery is great? What does that mean? <laughs> what, do, what do you mean the mystery is great? That is weird. Like you could say like the answer of godliness is great or something, but the mystery of it? No, it's not great that it's a mystery. It'd be great if well, we actually knew. That would be great. I, I mean, it also, it has been a, a great like time waster for many, many, I mean, for millennia. People have been sitting around pondering, wondering what the mystery of God is, right? You think that he would be nice enough to actually like you know reach down to us and say, "Hey, this is what's going on." Yeah, but no. uh, I you know I don't think we're that lucky. That's what makes it awesome: <laughs> the mystery. The mystery, yes. Uh, for behold, drink, drink. I am endless, and the punishment which is given from my hand is endless punishment. For endless is my name. Ha ha ha. Okay, hold on a second. So this is saying that people going to hell forever is like God has a choice. And he is choosing to do that. Like, he is basically bragging about it, saying, I am punishing you. This is not some weird cosmic rule, my hands are tied. I'm doing this. I could let you in, but no. Endless punishment. No, yeah, I mean, it's straight from his hand. It's like he, he's getting off on it. He cannot wait to endlessly punish us. Well, actually, it goes into, just in case you were confused, here's where it goes next. Wherefore, eternal punishment is God's punishment. Endless punishment is God's punishment. Man, this guy is really <laughs> rubbing it in, isn't he? <laughs> he's like, don't mess around now. I'm serious. At this point, he's like, just say punishment one more time. Come on, I'm almost there. Like, uh, it, it's, it, I mean, it's just so emphatic. It, it's so repetitive to the point that it's, you know, you wonder, you wonder what the person was thinking when they were writing this. Where it was... Was Joseph Smith so wronged by somebody that had done something that he's like, and and if you don't obey me, then then eternal punishment is God's punishment, and it's you know punishment in His hand, and He's endless, and His punishment is endless, and you're gonna get punished. Like you wonder what what exactly what his problem was here. You no, know, I also love that he he said eternal punishment and then endless punishment. It's like those are synonyms, bro. They mean the exact <laughs> same thing. You don't have to say it twice. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right, you're up. It's insane. Uh, wherefore, I command you by my name and by my almighty power that you repent. Repent, lest I smite you by the rod of my mouth and by my wrath and by my anger and your sufferings be sore. <laughs> wow. Mine was rod of my fair... mouth. Tell, tell me if you think this is significant, but mine was worded quite a bit different. So mine said, Wherefore I command you to repent and keep the commandments which you have received by the hand of my servant, Joseph Smith June, in my name. And it is by my almighty power that you have received them. Therefore I command you to repent, repent lest I smite. Yeah, then you get the whole rod in his mouth, which, ew. But, uh, so like anyway. the, the whole first part was, was added in. Uh, yeah, mine does. Mine just keeps on going with the hellfire condemnation. Mine doesn't uh, doesn't talk about Joseph Smith here or any. No, it know, did. Uh, it did revelation. because it said you, yours just said me, right? Or my yeah by my, my words. name and my almighty power. Yeah, right. So now, so so now, think about that, right? So you're saying the who's the who's the me in that s sentence? Was it Joe or was it God? Well, that's got to be God, like because mm. yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I I think at this point those are kind of synonymous though, because <laughs> I mean these were like Fair. delivered in. Let's see, this section the the author attribution is Joseph Smith. It wasn't Sidney Rigdon, but you know, like Sidney Rigdon would go into like seance like states, 
and he would just translate or you know blabble or whatever and, and people would write down the prophecies and call them res- revelations i don't know if joe had the same propensity to go into like the trance like states but i mean i don't think joe saw himself as separated by any sort of you know any stretch of imagination from god he was just directly pipelining the will of god and you know giving w- words to his will so, I mean, me and Joe, you know, me, my name, the, the caller IDs, those are those are just completely synonymous with each other. Fair enough. I also like the, uh, if I was listening to this and, and, and you had me sold, I'm sitting there terrified. Well, I don't want to be endless torment, eternal damnation. This all sounds horrible. <laughs> and then it's, and then he says, uh, I'm going to smite you by the rod of my mouth. I'd have gone like, wait, what now? What was that? That You're going to do what? <laughs> You have a rod in your mouth, and you're, you're like, going to swing it at me? punch me? What are you doing? <laughs> like, what does that look like? You put a pipe in your mouth and just bite it with your teeth and swing your head around? Like, it doesn't sound very intimidating. <laughs> Is that like the like the, the revelation, like Jesus with the sword coming out of his mouth type thing? Only yeah. this was like, you know, this was Oliver Cowdery describing, so he was obsessed with rods. So he's like, oh, not a sword, a rod. That's a rod of go. God's mouth. Oh, so <laughs> Oliver's know. writing this down, or you yeah. assume so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is given it, to Martin Harris, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so far, is... every every uh, doctrine or covenant or whatever the hell these are called that's been given to Martin has been pretty much just like, you screwed up, bro, and I just want to let you know you screwed up. And this one isn't really saying he screwed up. It's just like putting the fear of God in him, right? You pretty are much. super screwed if you don't do what you're told. And what's so fascinating is the difference in timeline here. Because, like, if if we're talking about, like, when the if the revelation was given when yours says in you know summer of 1829 it's you know chastising martin harris so he will fund the publishing of the book of mormon but if it was actually given in march 1830 like mine says i can't imagine what martin harris did exactly that is so you know so bad that god has or you know that joe has to you know put the fear of hell into him so much right now Maybe this is when he was going through his his divorce with his wife or something. I I don't know. I don't know what what's exactly happening. So yeah, the time difference kind of comes into play here. But you know what? If he was wavering on whether or not to fund the publication, then this all adds up. And if yeah. the historians made that connection and said, "Well, that's really bad. Let's just change the date and just say likely." As long as we say likely, if someone says, "No, that wasn't right," you're like, "Well, we said <laughs> likely, right? Eh, we don't." Yeah. Know. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is this in, in like in your version it's more damning if that's what the case is like because Quite. yours says the summer of 1829 but, but like what what did Martin do wrong in mine when it was originally written that he you know that he deserve a su- deserve such a chiding from Oh Joe. you're right I said it backwards yeah, yeah you're right so like I don't know how how you know what could have happened in March right before the 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 church started up I I mean maybe Martin was trying to like take over as his own church or something i don't know i'm just throwing that out there so throwing it against the wall seeing what sticks but what are you gonna do i'm confused dude yeah all right so i'm just gonna start out after the rod in the mouth right. uh, and by my wrath and by my anger and your sufferings be sore <laughs> okay how sore you know not <laughs> this is just so... i love how this is written how exquisite you know not Ooh, it's gonna be exquisite soreness <laughs> look out people <laughs> You're going to be exquisitely sore. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yay, drink. How hard to bear, you know not. Mm. You're going to have exquisite soreness that's hard to bear. Look it's out hard now. to bear. It's <laughs> uh, amazing. All righty. Uh, You're up. Uh, for behold, drink. Drink. I, God, have suffered these things for all that they might not suffer. So misery loves company in this case. If they would repent, but if they would not repent, they must suffer even as I. Yeah, great rules you have there, God. Okay, so tell me, like, your knowledge on Christianity here. Did God actually go to hell at any point, or, like, did Jesus go to hell at some point? Not in the Bible. That's what the the, the implication is here, right? It's it's threatening eternal punishment and hellfire very emphatically and then it's saying that god has suffered all of these things himself so does that mean that satan master of hell is more powerful than god well you know how apologists get around that right they just throw in the uh no no when jesus was on the cross he suffered like all of the pain of every man ever or something like oops beep some nonsense like that right so (laughs) you know what i mean like that's what they say 
And so it's like, oh, he suffered all of men's suffering. It's like, oh, okay. So he had some sort of magic suffering wand. I don't know. But, but that's most, how they get around that. Yeah, but those apologists don't really have to deal with the stuff in the, you know, the Doctrine and Covenants like we're reading right now. So, like, put your apologist cap on right now. Like, do you think that a Mormon apologist would say that God has been to hell? Like, God has suffered through hell that he created for us? Even if they're talking about the crucifixion. Well, that's a problem, too. Because yeah. I, God, suffered. So it's like, it's God on the cross? Hmm? Getting a little near mm-hmm. Godhead. Actually, it would be really hard. If if I had a, a like, very firm belief in that whole Godhead thing, that they're all three separate, this entire section would be very hard to parse out for me. Because oh, yeah. they are just using God and Christ like synonyms. And um, and here, even here, it says God's the one that suffered. When did that happen? Anyway, I don't know. You're right. Because it's it's the whole I, redemption I thing, know. right? He suffered so that people could repent. That that That's why he was crucified. Like that, according to both Christian and Mormon doctrine, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, or like, so he would pay for our sins or whatever that means. I mean, I don't know who was exactly holding the, the note of debt on the human sin but i mean yeah it's like why why who was holding god's feet to the fire in that case right who was who who had put that tenant on god that he had to follow it that human sacrifice was you know how to get around human sin maybe god just worked out way too hard and he was exquisitely sore and he was just really (laughs) whining about it Uh, he's like look i'm suffering (laughs) i'm suffering too okay i ran a marathon (laughs) I'm exquisitely sore. <laughs> okay. Uh, can God make a barbell so heavy that even he can't bear? Oh, no, he could. He could barely bear it. But, boy, <laughs> he was, he was sore afterwards. Super sore. <laughs> He'll be exquisitely sore. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to use that in a sentence soon. <laughs> Just stub my toe and be like, it's exquisitely sore. Just to see what people say. <laughs> anyway. It's a what? Right. And a what? Uh, uh, where in the hell were we? Which suffering Which, caused myself? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that's it. Go for it. Which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain and to bleed at every pore, both body and spirit? Yeah, God, not Jesus. God, yeah. No, yeah, it doesn't. It, Jesus is has not been mentioned in a long time. It hasn't said anything about Jesus. It's all saying God here. So in the last episode, you when it did this, you kind of called it out as like anti Mormon. Would you yes. still make that same claim? Like, well, yeah, it's totally it's it's Trinitarian and non anti Mormon, or it, it it is anti Mormon. Sorry, yeah, yeah, because I mean Mormons have their own nuanced belief about what the Godhead is. That's not that doesn't fall into line with anything of what we're reading right now. Oh. You you actually stopped before the end of the verse of mine. So the suffering body and spirit after he bled out of all his holes. Ah. And would that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink. I I don't I don't know and, what that. Does yours say that? It, yes. Uh, and would so who would like they're using would as a will like I will that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink. So what God didn't want Himself to drink the bitter cup and shrink. And shrink from from sin that. Uh, Dude, I'm know. lost. I, I don't. I, that, it that, doesn't make it sense. It was like I was following this thing all the way through. That one is weird. Maybe it means <sighs> that, like, the bitter cup is like giving into temptation. Maybe, maybe, and uh, like he could have like just ended the pain because he's God, but he didn't, and that's why he's still big and badass and didn't shrink. Well, okay, and, and then more. the next verse completely blows that apart because it says, Nevertheless, glory be to the Father, and Whoa. I partook and finished my preparations unto the children of men. So it's like, oh, okay, and then there's that random verse that's been thrown in there that separates Father from Jesus. Like, yeah. what? Well, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, well, apparently both God and Jesus are worried about shrinkage, so uh, <laughs> they're making sure they don't drink that stuff that shrinks them because that, that could be a problem <laughs> stay out of the pool too guys if that's what you're worried about just saying all right <laughs> the anti viagra of the day yeah wherefore i command you again to repent because i haven't said it enough lest i humble you with my almighty power rap battle again and that you confess your sins let you suffer these punishments of which i have spoken 
of which in the smallest, yea, drink, even in the least degree you have tasted at the time I withdrew my spirit. <laughs> okay, so I guess if, if you ever suffered, that's when uh, God withdrew his spirit. So he was like, you know, I can make you suffer, and uh, I can do that anytime I want. You, you want to taste it again? I'll just withdraw. What do you think of that? <laughs> Took your spirit away. Right. Yeah, how do you oh. like that? Oh, and it will be a, uh, I'll take it away eternally. It'll be endless. So, ha, ha, sucks to be you. Yeah, yeah. You only got the least degree of it. Yeah, I just gave you a taste. I gave you a taste of the torment you're going to go through. No, this guy's a sweetheart. <laughs> All right, All isn't right. he? Oh, such a gentleman. Let's see. You're up. Um, and I command you that you preach not but repentance and show not these things, neither speak these things unto the world, for they cannot bear meat, but milk they must receive. Hang on, oh, hang on, hang on. I've heard that before. Well, haven't they just spent the entire like last twelve verses telling us to go out and re tell you know call people to repentance? But now it's like no, 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 no. Don't don't call them to repentance and don't preach. You know, don't preach that. You know, you got to feed them the milk before the meat. It's like, but you just told us to go out and preach repentance. Repent, repent. Like you said it tons of times. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it said more than once and just repeated it. That's the only thing you should preach. It just said yeah. it again. Nothing else yeah. but repentance. So yeah. what is the milk version of repent? I like, guess feel milk? bad for what you did. Milk's repent and meat is kolob, I think. <laughs> I think that's how that works. <laughs> uh, theological you don't drop that on him. You don't drop that on him right been solved. Away. We've reached an epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> that's what meat means. Because trust me, uh, uh, I, when I when, that was definitely a, a meaty episode. When I, uh, <laughs> Meat saw <Kolob>. is collab. <laughs> yeah, that was something else. Uh, that's beautiful. That's a bumper sticker. Uh. I was trying to say. Oh yeah, there was one other thing. I mean, it was weird, but the thing that said and show not these things unto the world until it is wisdom in me was added to mine. For some yeah, reason. mine does not say that. So. Yeah, they're just adding on a little caveat onto yours. Well, so before it was just like, just fun. go out there and preach it. And then it said, well, well when we tell you to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah. We'll let you know. <laughs> well, okay, didn't he had, he had to do that once with Hiram Smith too, right? He did, yeah. He, right, he gave a revelation to some person and was like, you're so awesome. And then he gave a revelation to Hiram and was like, don't tell people stuff. You're making it a problem, dude. I think that's what he's doing to Martin Harris here. He's like, dude, just shut up and go call people to repentance and then only feed them milk because they can't, they can't digest meat, you know, collab yet. So I, there you go. That's the best thing I can think of. Yeah. All right. So you uh, finish that up after the milk business. <laughs> Wherefore they must not know these things lest they perish. <laughs> there you go. Don't, don't feed them collab or they're going to die. <laughs> They're just going to laugh at you and walk out of the room, and then they're screwed. <laughs> uh, yep, exactly. They're gone forever. Yeah, then, they're, then they're subject to God's eternal punishment because now they've heard the gospel, and they're they're considered apostates because they turned away from it. Yep. Yeah, that's just my own milk. addition. Sorry. It is funny, though. The, uh, the, the phrase that I've heard repeated many times is milk before meat, and this one actually said it opposite. They cannot bear meat, but milk they must receive. So there you go. It's basically treating any like non-believer like an infant right gotta wean them off the tit first before they can uh, <laughs> eat some meat okay learn of me and listen to my words walk in the meekness of my spirit oh yeah so far you sound so, super meek yes meek meek yes so that's so the, meek. from everything we've heard that is the exact word that i would call god uh, let me let me go back meek. a page eternal punishment is my punishment endless punishment is my punishment oh but by the way i'm meek super meek it's super meek yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you shall have peace in me. Yeah, because you're all about peace with your endless torment. I am Jesus, MF, and Christ. I came by the will of the Father, and I do His will. All right. So now it's feeling a little more Godheady. But uh, what are you gonna do? Well, that's because yours was changed from mine. So that's. Oh, really? That's... What did yours say? Mine just says, okay, so mine just says, uh, walk in the meekness of my spirit, and you shall have peace in me, comma, Jesus Christ, by the will of the Father. Oh, well, he at least said Father. But, yeah, it did yeah, say Father, so it made it sort of a distinction, but then, it, you know, it drew an equivocation there because it, it's, you know, just comma, Jesus Christ, 
um, who sort of is the father at the same time. So, you know, just a, a very minor change can have larger implications, like in yours here. This is fantastic, though, that halfway through this thing, he has to throw in who he is. You know, like, <laughs> it's just absurd. I am Jesus Christ. Well, I, you said that before. That's, you think that's I what forgot? he's been doing the whole time. Dude. I know. I'm aware of that. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but you know what? Rappers do that. <laughs> they though. forgot. Uh, Rappers do that. They they name drop themselves fairly often. Uh, yeah. So, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> I think Jesus is is a is a wannabe rapper. Anyway. Yep. All right. I don't know. Your God is the you know it, you know Joseph is the greatest revelator ever. <laughs> <That's it>. <laughs> <laughs> Best name for the first album, the Revelator. <laughs> the revelator uh, ever. All right. Oh, that's amazing. See, right. uh, and again, I command you that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor no. seek thy neighbor's life. <laughs> you hear that, Joe? You listening? <laughs> <laughs> He's even rhyming. <laughs> He's such a badass revelator. He is. Uh, <laughs> Shall not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor seek thy neighbor's life. <laughs> He's got it. Yeah, this is working. <laughs> no, but I do love. Didn't Joseph very much like marry his neighbor's wives? <laughs> Right? So much. Like so, more than so once? So much. <laughs> uh, that's like all he did by the time he was done. He's like, I have coveted every wife. Yeah, but don't oh, worry, don't worry. Don't to worry. Covet all no, 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 no. No, this wasn't a commandment to me. It was just through me. See, you know, this was for Martin. So Martin can't oh, have no, Oh, no, wives. this makes so much sense now. Yes, he was going through his <laughs> divorce. No, don't covet thy neighbor's wife because he was he was playing hanky panky with the neighbor's wife, and then his wife was probably cheating too. So he's like, don't try and k kill your buddy that you know went and fooled around oh. with your wife. So it's basically like, <laughs> look, I know your neighbor's banging your wife, but just don't kill him. <laughs> right? It's only because you were banging somebody else's wife. That's the only reason. <laughs> It is weird that that was thrown in there, right? Like, what a random commandment to give. But now it makes sense. Yeah, especially amidst everything else that's been happening. It was, it's really out of the blue. Like, where did the hell did that come from? So that actually makes more sense for your date than my date. The March 1830. I, let's see, I'm not sure when exactly when they filed for divorce. That's fair. That would be that would be a pretty interesting fact if you had that on the top of your head. No, no, no. But I know that the entire time the Book of Mormon was being written, the tensions were really building up between them, right? So oh, yeah, because I, she I was like, be why surprised. are you wasting our money on this nonsense, right? It, that's Yeah, that was kind of the heart of the problem. Which, and then he beat know, the crap out of, of her, didn't he? Well, yeah, and then he also said, if you will leave me alone, I will make money of it. So, yeah, I, I mean, he kind of had, you know, he, he wore his reasons on his sleeve anyway. Yeah, he's but, like, woman, I mean, I'm trying it... to get rich. we got to print this book so I get rich. <laughs> right? Calm down. <laughs> but I think it was, you know, it was probably, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know which date makes more sense here, the 1830 or the 1829. I mean, either one of them could have worked. Yeah. All right, let me keep reading then. And again, I command thee that thou shalt not covet thine own property. <laughs> uh, uh, here we go. <laughs> but impart it freely to the printing of the Book of Mormon. Boom! But boom there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Which contains the truth and the word of God. Yeah, there it is. So now <laughs> I don't know what date it is. They can't even, they can't decide. No wonder they couldn't figure out what date it is. Because they're like, well... He was having the whole divorce thing, but then we're basically saying, we, we need your money, bro. Give us your money. Stop holding your money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. So in that case, you know, your date makes a lot more sense, being 1829, because that's when the book was going to the printer, and they were like, hey, we gotta have your money. So do you think it was just a typo? Happen. Like they actually just put the wrong date in yours? Because uh, you're right, it wouldn't make any sense to give a commandment if they were like, you must give your money to print the Book of Mormon. He'd have been like, uh, dude, you took all my money to print the Book of Mormon. I have no more of the money. <laughs> right? Well, hang on. Okay, so so maybe we can throw this little wrench into the, the mix here. They signed a promissory mo note or like a mortgage for it, and I think the note was due for six months after the uh, the Book of Mormon went public. So maybe this is if let's see. So it would have been printed from um, August to March. 
That was the, that six month period or, you know, eight month period from August to March. So it might it might be coming really close to the time when they weren't making the money off of the Book of Mormon they thought they were going to make. And it was coming time that he had to actually give up his farm and sell it off to uh, to pay them the mortgage note. That makes sense. And I would assume he was not excited about this. Nor was his wife, which is probably why, you know, why they got a divorce at this time, too. Man, this is so uh, in that case that, you know, this makes a little bit more sense on my end, uh, no. you know, with the March 1830 date. Again, it just, yours has to be more accurate, right? I mean, the only way it wouldn't be is if they literally just wrote the wrong date down. But who does that? <laughs> but you can't, like, decades later be like, oh, yeah, we found this thing that was clearly dated at the time. And we're going to change it. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. That's not a thing that happens. <laughs> right? We're not only going to change the wording, we're just going to change eight months from when it actually happened. Yes. It's just yes, for fun. Indeed. All right, yeah. poor Martin. He doesn't get to covet anything. Joe gets no. to covet everything. Martin gets nothing. Well, yeah, I feel guy. bad for him. But he was the mark, right? So, what are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just, just deal with it. Just give the money to Joe, I guess. So that's what he did. Let's see. So, printing of the Book of Mormon, which contains the truth and the word of God, which is my word to Gentile, that soon it may go to the, the Jew, of which the Lamanites are a remnant. <laughs> they go. may believe the gospel and look not for a Messiah to come, which has already come. Yeah, except that they're not. Bummer. <laughs> uh, that's so great. And I love how at this time, right, this was this was well before they had sent any missionary troops out to any of the the, the Native American settlements on the western borders in uh, Missouri. Uh -huh. And they had no idea how badly they were going to get rejected from the, the tribes like they did. When this happened at this time, they were like super gung ho, optimistic, like, yeah, we're going to we're going to unite all of the the, the Indians together and they're going to love it because we got their history here. But then once they actually got out there, they're like, oh, they're chasing us out with pitchforks. <laughs> Crap. Well, we, I mean, that was kind of the I mean, let's be honest, that was the culture of America at the time. Right. That yeah. we have to civilize these uh, barbarians. Right. And these savages. Yeah. And so this this idea of we're going to teach you, you know, western education and we're going to give you proper clothes to wear this was all considered like altruistic on our part and they were just for the most part like no we're kind of like our culture and <laughs> go away <laughs> right but and but but, yeah, but our culture is better but 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 our culture is better so uh no no but we like our culture but our culture is better so why deal with it and learn you, why, english why aren't they listening my goodness they just they, they could have our culture yeah, bummer. <laughs> right? If only Let's just listen. shoot him and make it easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you don't want our culture, I guess you have to die. Anyway, yeah. So, I mean, I can't I can't really blame the uh, these guys for assuming that, hey, if you go out there and say, hey, good news, guys, you thought you were, uh, you know, pushed off to the side. Ah, no, we can save you for eternity. You know, they, they were thinking they were doing them a favor, and they're just like, uh, please leave. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were doing great before you guys got here. Promise there we were. Go. All right, and again, I command thee that thou shalt pray vocally as well as in thy heart. Okay, interesting. So in your head and out loud. My, just, it's a very, very small change. Mine just says into thyself instead of in thy heart. Yeah, fair so, enough. It's just a small change anyway. No, I actually like yours better. It makes more sense because you, yeah. again, the heart just pumps blood. It's all it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, drink before the world as well as in secret, in public as well as in private. Well, there you go. In case we didn't know what it meant to be vocally or in your heart, we had to uh, reword it twice. <laughs> but all right, fair enough. Just pray all the time, whether you're in public or by yourself. You just whip it out and just pray away. You should always have a prayer in your heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah always. Ridiculous. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's see. And thou shalt declare glad tidings. Don't get mad. Get glad tidings. Yay! Drink. drink. Publish it upon the mountains and upon every high place. High among place. Every high place. I thought those were evil. Book of Mormon was very clear about that. Hmm. All right. Was fair it? enough. I don't remember those. You remember that they had the whole high place thing? I remember like the the great and spacious building that was up. No, on no, place. way after that, way after that, they went to the Lamanites and they were like preaching on high places, and everyone took turns getting on the high place, and they're like, "How evil that high place!" It doesn't really matter. We'll just move on. <laughs> Fair enough. The, the faithful listeners will be like, "Oh, 
Oh, David nailed that one. Or I'm dead wrong. But either way. <laughs> or be uh, like, Bryce, why didn't you remember that? You do get crapped on more than I do. Because <laughs> they just I assume know. that somehow you're like the Wikipedia of all things Mormon. <laughs> How do they not know that I've already spent a third of my life outside of the church? I'm only 25. Well, not only that, though. I mean, I think it's, uh, I, I like it because if there was someone that just already knew anything, well, what's the excitement in that? So I, I feel like we're learning this stuff together. No. Right. It's it's a fun little choose your own adventure journey. We're, we're both losing the <laughs> whole time. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> okay, sorry. You were uh, uh, getting high continue <laughs> let's see uh and among every people which thou shalt be permitted to see well, all right there you go and... yeah publish it upon every mountain and declare it upon every high place if they let you see them <laughs> yeah if you're <laughs> <laughs> which, which I think is great because that even speaks more to this missionary tribe, the first tribe that or missionary troop, sorry, that went out to the, the Native Americans because they eventually got kicked off of the reservations and then they had to pl apply to like General William Clark to get a yeah. permit to go see them. And he was like, no, you're not going to go bother these people because they hate you already. <laughs> the same Clark of the uh, Lewis and Clark duo, right? Yeah. Yeah. The same Clark. Yeah. Yep. At least they're rubbing it's elbows crazy. with celebrities. At least a celebrity told them to go to hell. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> uh, what better way to get told to go to hell? I'm telling you. And thou shalt do it with all humility, trusting in me, reviling not against revilers. <laughs> reviling not what? against revilers. All right. <laughs> none of that reviling. Just none of it. All right. Uh, that's amazing. And of the tenants thou shalt not talk, the tenants... But thou shalt declare repentance and faith on the Savior and remission of sins by baptism and by fire. Again with that. What, what does it mean to be back? Well, anyway. Yay, drink. Even the Holy Ghost. Alrighty. So, okay, so I think this is kind of talking about the same thing. Like when Hiram was going out and revealing secrets or things that Joe didn't want people to know about him and about what was uh, going on. Is the and he was like, no, it's just only preach repentance. I think the same thing was going on with Martin because th this guy had like a behind the scenes view of the whole inception of Mormonism, mm. right? Like he'd been with the whole thing from the beginning. So he was probably telling people all kinds of stuff that he had seen Joseph do. And they're probably like, uh, yeah, he re he read the book out of a hat. Did the plates fit in the hat too? Wait, yeah. what? So I think Joe is basically <laughs> saying to Martin, "Do I really every single time have to tell you Vegas rules on this one? Do I really have to do that? Like, come on, <laughs> you can't figure out for yourself what you should and shouldn't say. Come on, bro. <laughs> right? Exactly. Anyway, once again, so when you hear baptism, you assume you know, someone being dunked down underwater, and it's like baptism by fire, and it's like, oh, that sounds really bad. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> yeah, I've never, uh, never had that one explained well. People are like, oh, it just means Holy Ghost, but but it's like, well, why, why fire? When is submerging yourself in fire good ever? Anyway, well, what are you gonna do? And I okay, so I remember that uh, uh, when I was going to church, I was told that the earth was, or like our bodies are representative of of what's happening to the earth or what's going to happen to the earth. So like first you're baptized by water, and then you get confirmed into the church, which is your baptism by fire. And they said that uh, I remember the person saying to me that you know the earth in the global flood was baptized by water. And now all the fires that are going on around everywhere and the whole world is on fire. That's the baptism by fire. And that's what has to happen before Jesus can come back. And I was like, let's go set everything on fire then. Let's get <laughs> Jesus to come back here. I want to talk to that guy. Because that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. Uh, right. No, but I've, never, uh, I've always been confused because the baptism by water is like you literally have to do it. Right. There's no, my God, you do it for people after they're dead. Still dunking people. Uh, but then <laughs> but then the fire is like, well, that's metaphorical. Well, can we just make the water baptism metaphorical? Do we have to get wet? Uh, yeah, you do have to get Ooh. wet. Well, what? I don't... It's weird. I just think they need a different word. Like, you can say baptism, and that just means you're getting dunked in water. Done. It, like, yeah, the fire it, thing, just don't call it baptism. Call it something yeah, else. Yeah, swap it out for for a real baptism by fire word. It's called immolation. You're just call it immolation now. Yeah, that, that, would, that would definitely <laughs> solve the Mormon problem. I'm kidding, everyone. <laughs> right? Kidding. We don't want to burn uh, people. Although Bryce did <laughs> seem a little bit excited about bringing Jesus back by setting the earth on fire. But that's okay. Beside the point. You're up. <laughs> uh, sadism aside. Behold, drink. drink. This is a great and the last commandment. 
which I shall give unto you. The last one, really. All right, so this is going to be pretty important. For this shall suffice for thy daily walk, even unto the end of thy life. And Mine misery... actually threw in there, sorry. Mine threw in, the last commandment I'll give you concerning this matter. Mine's way more absolute. Mine is just like, this is the last commandment which I shall give unto you, and stop. That's You know it. what's funny? I will bet you money that there is another revelation to Martin Harris in this book somewhere. And so they had to throw that in there to make sense of it. <laughs> That's my guess. But we'll see. Uh, when Joseph deals in absolutes, it creates a lot of problems for the, the church's PR department. Like it does this. indeed. All right. So right <laughs> after the uh, last commandment, just pick up from there. Uh, and misery thou shalt receive, if thou wilt slight these counsels, yea, drink even destruction of thyself and property. There you go. So yeah. it's just like, if you don't listen to what I'm saying, not only are you going to be tormented forever in hell, but you're just going to get screwed here on earth too. It's basically oh, yeah. lose-lose if you don't do what you're told. Oh, well, and I think, I think the, uh, the commandment gets a little bit more emphatic from, uh, oh, from here on. So it I, does. I feel free please, to take please let away. me take over. This is fantastic stuff. I can see it coming. <laughs> Impart a portion of thy property. Okay, God. Yay. Drink even a part of thy lands. And all save the support of thy family. Wow. So it's like, uh, what what is the minimum you need to keep your family alive? We want exactly. everything else. <laughs> Every last penny you got. Oh I want God. the change in the couch cushions. Give it to <gasps> me. Dude, you were so <laughs> right. Listen, pay yeah. the debt thou hast contracted with the printer. Release thyself from bondage. Yep. So you're right. That makes sense. So Your much Your date sense. is right. Why on earth yeah. did they change it? So we are still confused as to why they decided to uh, to change the date in my printing, right? Yeah. it well, doesn't make any sense. Well, because it makes more sense this way. Because, I mean, did they think, like, okay, so did they think that Martin was just going to sign the mortgage note and then everything was going to be hunky-dory after that? No, he had to fulfill that. They had to sell Books of Mormon in order to pay for that printer's debt, and they didn't sell them very well at all. Hardly any of them sold. So then Martin Harris was just on the hook for, you know, $3,000 and was like, oh, what am I going to do? Here's the commandment from God. Pay the printer's debt. Release thyself from bondage. He basically there said sell your property and even part of your land, except for the whatever you need just to survive on. And pay. The oh, and debt. it goes... It's so much worse. It's so much worse than that. The next verse, leave thy house and home, except when thou shalt desire to see them. Does that mean sell them? I think so, but except when thou shalt desire to see them, what does that mean? I think it just means like, bro, quit spending all your time with your wife. I don't know. Weird. I, I don't know. Weird. The, the last part of that was strange. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it makes more. It makes a lot of sense when it says, "Leave thy house and home." You know, impart a portion of thy property. It's like if, just give everything up. It's all going to the church, so just deal with it, and then be a member of the church, and you'll be all right, bro. Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, it's basically I, just uh, however I need to tell you this. Just give me your money and pay your <laughs> debt that I that I made you incur, <laughs> and uh, everyone's gonna be happy. You know. And then yep, it goes on exactly. and speak freely to all. Yea, drink, preach, exhort, declare the truth, even with a loud voice. I, can I stop for a second? Speak freely? Didn't he just go through <laughs> several iterations of saying, don't speak freely? <laughs> uh, I had forgotten that already. <laughs> the whole meat, milk, meat, and uh, like, don't tell him about yeah, the penance, like just tell him about repentance. Only. Weird. Uh, weird, weird, yes, weird. it's beautiful. Repentance only. Oh, no, 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 you can speak freely. No, no, it's only milk. Don't give them collab. No, no, you know, speak yeah. freely. All right. uh, and, and, and preach the, I know people uh, don't write in. We know that collab chronologically had not appeared in the doctrine yet. But still, <laughs> I'm sure they had their own. <laughs> if, if, you were probably right, Bryce. Quit telling them about the damn hat. <laughs> it's probably what was going on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, speak freely now. Uh, poor Martin. I've always felt bad for Martin. Now he's just sitting there scratching his head. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Okay, but he's supposed <laughs> to say with a loud voice. With a sound of rejoicing, crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. No. Uh, there it is. Does anyone know what Hosanna means? I don't know what Hosanna is. I have heard Hosanna in like 10,000 praise songs that we used to sing in church. I don't know. Yeah. Because now it's saying the name of God. Is his name Hosanna? Uh, who cares? 
meaningless God speak. All right, I did it. I, I, I actually did it. I clicked the, the e-reader to get the definition. It is a uh, used to express adoration, praise, or joy in biblical Judaic and Christian use. So there you go. It just means, hey. it just means yay, in Jesus speak. <laughs> yay, ramen, ramen. There you go. All right, you're up. Let's see. Pray always, and I will pour out my spirit upon you, and grace shall be your blessing. Always makes me chuckle. <laughs> I pour it out over. <laughs> Just gonna pour my spirit all over your face. I right, keep going. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yay! Drink even more than if you should obtain treasures of earth and corruptibleness to the extent thereof. Well, that might have been the longest word I've ever heard. Corruptibleness. Okay. <laughs> right. So basically, if you have treasures on earth, then you can be corrupted. But if you give me all your treasure, yeah, you're safe. No, no we, we're all good, bro. Yeah, good to go. <laughs> it's weird how that works. As long <laughs> you as you be gave, corrupted, gave money to Joe, he was happy. He gave you good revelations. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to get corrupted? Come on now. Just give me your treasure right. so you don't get tempted by him. There you go. <laughs> uh, all right. All Behold, right. drink. Canst thou read this without rejoicing and lifting up thy heart for gladness? Yeah. Yeah. You can. I can. You can, God. I very much can. You totally, totally can. Because so far, it, uh, I don't know what I would be rejoicing, quite frankly. You want to finish it up? Uh, or canst thou run about longer as a blind guide? What? What on earth does that what? mean? All right, so about long. So that means cannot, I think? Or can you... No, it means can you run longer than a blind guide? It's, it's inquisitive, that. right? I mean, I'm going to go with yes. I assume that I could go further than a blind guide could. Although, on, I don't let's, know. let's get the next one because maybe that'll shed a little more light on it. Or canst thou be humble and meek and conduct thyself wisely before me? It's, it seems like it should be inquisitive, but there's no question mark. Mine has a question mark. They threw it in. Um, oh, okay. Well, so what you. it's saying, can you can you be humble and meek and conduct yourself wisely before me? I guess he's just saying like, hey, come on now. Do you have what it takes? I think this is the do you have what it takes <laughs> speech, I think. <laughs> you the, gotta want it. You gotta want the spirit to be poured all over you. But the blind guide thing is, we're, I think we just have to move past it. I. It's weird. I don't That's, know what that yeah, means. Yeah, that seems just like Christians, uh, you know... All right, I'll like do the last one. ring speak I'll do the very last one. Yay. Drake, come unto me, thy Savior. Amen. A rat! There you go. <laughs> well, somehow, we dragged this... Uh, oh, well, oh, well, well, it's over an hour now. I assume I won't have to edit much. Sometimes we have, like, some long pauses in the middle where we have some audio issues. This time went fairly well, so I think this yeah. is going to be an over-hour episode. Uh, just from 19. Well, that was kind of fun. Uh, listen to uh, Martin getting chastised yet again. Poor guy. Poor guy. It's like every time he gets a revelation, it's nothing but hell and damnation and give me your crap. <laughs> Isn't it? And, and give up your money. I mean, that's the biggest part of it. It's always like, hey, you have some money. I can hear it chingling around in your pocket. Could give that to me real quick if you don't mind. You know, and uh, maybe he buy a burger. He could have <laughs> given him like something. Like, okay, give me all your money, but all right. Go ahead and covet your neighbor's wife. Oh, we won't watch. <laughs> nothing. He doesn't even get that. He gets nothing. <laughs> Poor guy. He gets absolutely yeah. nothing. Uh, and well. what's so sad is, like, just knowing the, the character of Martin Harris, like, he seemed like he was such a religious dupe that he would just buy any of this. Like, it, it, Joseph would put this stuff out on a platter for him, and he would just lap it up gladly. <gasps> oh, God is talking to me. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, like, give him, a, give up all my possession. Okay, okay, if you say so, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I was such a bad person. It, it, yeah. It's just like, he, I mean, Job was just leading him around with, like, a carrot, and then, you know, this was one of the stick verses, or one of stick chapters, I should say. Yeah, definitely stick. I didn't see a carrot in there. Uh, no, no, oh no! Was there? Did he even say anything about eternal life? I think the best, the best he gave him was you get to rest. <laughs> was the rest, best, the yeah. best thing he got. <laughs> Resting. <laughs> <laughs> What's my uh, reward? Oh, let's take a break. You know, that's fine. Wow. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? Uh, that's uh, doesn't, that's uh, yeah. Doesn't 19. doesn't heaven sound great? Just it, nothing but an eternal nap. You just yeah. get to rest all you want. So that's nineteen, like, Bryce. I'm going to stop talking about 19 
because this episode's gone long enough, and, and I forgot to start the episode with the big news. I forgot to introduce you as award-winning podcaster, Bryce uh, Blank. Uh, hey. So congratulations, sir. How, or sure. Well, uh, Why did I say sure? Uh, sir. Sure. Well, how, sure. How, how, how many sure. produce did you take home? I lost count. That was, uh, I think it was three of them. Wow. So what did you, so, you get? You got best new podcast. Best new podcast. Uh, Fantastic. I think best original research was for the uh, the Joseph Smith uh, court hearing episode. Wow. And uh, I can't remember what the other one is. I think it was uh, best episode, right? Because there was one where you and I were competing. One. Yeah, one... yeah, yeah. That, that's right. That was the the, uh, the last category. That was like best scripture study. I think it was, and that was the the Book of Mormon episode. Got that one. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what that I would have been. I would have called Val for you. If, because I think someone nominated, I honestly, this year had, had literally nothing to do with it. Like, I don't even know how I got nominated. Well, I guess I don't even know how I got nominated last year. But whoever out there took the time to nominate the show, thank you. Appreciate that. But there's no way that, uh, for an individual episode, that my, uh, which one was it? It was the Kolob episode, ironically. <laughs> right? Uh, was what was nominated <laughs> for best episode. But, uh, yeah, I would have, I would have felt bad for you if that had won over your, uh, Seven hour Book of Mormon episode. <laughs> well, I can't don't, imagine. How don't long sell it yourself short now. I mean, you you still pulled in what was it, one or two Brodies? Uh, I don't. I, I guess I don't know. I, I oh yeah, so sorry. And and the uh, my Book of Mormon podcast is now two years in a row the uh, best scripture reading podcast. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So congratulations. Or best to scripture you, reading man. period. It's not just podcast, but just best scripture reading. Uh, yeah, still there. Still got it. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. Double, yep. double. The two, the other one, the other running. category that we won last year just wasn't a category this year, so we couldn't couldn't get that one. But for but for the uh, I think I think the show was up for in two nominated in two. You beat me in one. Congratulations! You are officially a better podcaster than me. And uh, you know, huh. I think we're tied, right? Because I have a total of three Brodies, and you just got all three in one year. So okay, nah, there well, you we're go. equally as good. How's that? How's that? We're oh, equally as awesome. Can't there let you go. Get, I can't let you get too cocky. Because then, you know. <laughs> oh, no. God forbid that happens. No, we can't have podcasters being cocky around here. No, no. I'm, I'm worried about your soul, <laughs> Bryce. You have to be humble. Come on. Uh, uh, hey, don't, don't be feeding me any of that meat now. I can't hear that. Exactly. Hey, uh, give me some milk first, please. <laughs> <laughs> Pour out your, the spirit of the milk. <laughs> Sincerely, congratulations. Uh, definitely well-deserved. Uh, I love that you that your show got Best New Podcast. I think it was, uh, yeah. I, when I saw the other ones up there, I was like, well, that's not even a contest. Actually, you crushed that category, if I recall. I went in and looked. It was. Uh, it didn't really seem like it was much of a contest. You crushed it. So, congratulations. <laughs> awesome. Well, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And, and you know, to you as well. I mean, it, you, you, two two years running on Brody Awards, that's uh, that's pretty fantastic to, uh, to keep relevant inside the ex-Mormon community where there's so much new content, so much new stuff going up all the time. Staying relevant two years in a row is pretty fantastic. So, I mean, sincere congratulations to you as well, man. That's Thank you, really, Bryce. really awesome. I appreciate that. I do know kind of the one thing I bring to the table that kind of nobody else in this community brings to the table. I've just never been Mormon or knowing, <laughs> you know what I mean? I wasn't raised around Mormons. I was just like complete outsider that thought it'd be fun to do a thing. And uh, yeah. So that's no matter no one else can ever compete with that unless they like nobody else wants to come in from the outside. <laughs> like I've heard enough about that. I don't want to get anywhere near that. Yeah, that was the only one uh, brave enough to uh, come into the, uh, the the culture that is Mormonism, which I I didn't really know anything about. Anyway, what are you gonna right. do? Yeah, you you are officially like the the ex Mormon like wild card party boy like. Who saw this guy coming in from left field, and who thought he was going to bring the Book of Mormon to the table in such an entertaining light? But here it is, and it's uh, it's been a hell of a ride, man. <laughs> it's, it's been tough. amazing. When you know so little about a culture, though, I, I don't know when I'm being offensive and when I'm not, right? So I've had, uh, <laughs> anyway, what are you going to do? I'm just being me, and uh, so far people have liked it. But anyway, so that yeah, I just we, we Bryce and I had to take a moment to uh, you know brag a little give each other a little pat on the back i think it's pretty awesome and anyway there's that definitely that was good fun man yeah what better episode to conclude that on we just spent the whole time listening about how much of a piece of crap martin harris was and 
you know, talking about how everybody's going to hell and, you know, but, you know, it all ends on a good note because we're, we're award winners and it's fantastic. Yeah. And you know what, Jesus? <laughs> Get a brag you, for a minute. Jesus, you might have had your whole rap battle going and going, but you know what? I don't think you ever, Brody. I'm just saying, bro. Where's yours? <laughs> you got nothing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, <laughs> drop the mic. He don't know what hit him in the face. Oh. Uh, all right. The last thing I want to say, and uh, for those of you that listen to both shows, you know this already. But uh, Bryce has started this this interesting project where he said, you know what? David seemed to be onto something just reading a book. That seems super easy. I think I'll try to just read a book. And so uh, <laughs> Bryce is reading The Late War of 1812 Between the United States and Great Britain. Is that what it's called? Or yeah, I... very close. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, yeah, it was a, a possible source text book for the Book of Mormon. And yeah. yeah, there's two two episodes up that are demos for it right now, and those are only available to uh, people that are patrons of the show. Well, as a proud patron, I get to listen to them. So I'm very excited. There you go. Yeah, and you know, the, your I found your podcasting business model is really nice. So limited uh, editing. All you do is flop open a book and just blabble into a microphone for a while. You know, it's actually a lot of fun. Oh, but yeah. yeah, I mean, just just in the the two episodes that I've done so far, uh, you know it's 50 pages in it's so clear like you said earlier it's so clear to see the connections between it the is, book of mormon and this book like it it, there's sometimes that i'm reading it that i think that i'm reading straight out of the book of mormon because it's just so similar i love it i love it it's such a great book and in the first episode you uh you kept saying like oh my god i instinctively want to say drink every time i read yay or it came to pass for the record and then you started kind of doing it in the second one yeah, but you totally have my blessings. I, I certainly do not have a copyright on drinking games. So, yeah, <laughs> knock yourself out. Anybody. I actually think this just happened. So I, I'll just say this. And, and listen, it's it's fine. I don't, you know, I'm not, everything's good. But my grandfather did pass away last week, which is why I said I'm kind of behind on stuff. And so uh, even at his funeral, I hate to make a joke about this because I love the guy. He was an awesome man. But the, the pastor was reading something, and I know it was Isaiah. Because I was like, I have read that before in the Book of Mormon. And they just kept dropping, <laughs> dropping these yays. And I, everything I was worth to not yell drink was as the pastor was reading. <laughs> and, and I'm just kind of like, you know what? What if, what if like, we all just started doing that, right? Just, just saying drink after yays and it came to passes or beholds. Like, we could just make that a, like a thing. You know, so yes, I don't want, I don't actually don't want it to just be something that this show does. I would love this as a spread to the world that uh, every time people are sitting in church, maybe you just hear from the corner, drink, and everyone's like, who said that? Who said that? No. I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway. I was going to say, like, sacrament meeting will never be the same after today. <laughs> <laughs> because you got one little smart ass in the back of the chapel that's like, drink. Hey, who said that? Who said that? That's fantastic. You gotta have a ventriloquist in the crowd. Yeah, and they could just say like, "Well, no, no, no. I'm just re really ready for that water you're about to give me. Yeah, I'm parched over here. <laughs> ready for the Jesus oh, that's water. That's fantastic. <laughs> the, the little little Jesus water in the sippy cup and a little yeah. bit of Wonder Bread. Yummy. That represents Jesus's blood. This is all <laughs> dude. Oh, I cannot wait for next episode. All right, oh, all right. Okay, God. so there you go. Uh, for for two episodes now, Bryce has been telling us. That 20 is going to just change our lives. So I'm really excited about it. I, I imagine some of you at home are probably either know what's coming or maybe you're, you're going to jump ahead and read it just to see what's coming. But if you're like me, you're just going to save the surprise and find out what's so awesome about 20. But uh, apparently mm -hmm. it's going to be a good one. Yeah, I can't wait. It will be an absolute delight. Well, all right. This has gone all on right. entirely too long. So, <laughs> right? Uh, maybe just close that one out right there. Until next time. Until next time, when we tackle <laughs> Doctrine and Covenants 20, this is uh, uh, David Michael and Bryce Blank and Ale signing off. See you later, everybody. See you later. Have a good one. This song is licensed for use within this podcast. All song and copyright information can be found at www.mybookofmormonpodcast.com. Show me here, show me